Bonjour! Death here as usual to intro you into the not so final episode of Wake and Skate. Turns out we have some other skater friends who are interested in being in an episode, and I'm all for the extra editing during quarantine. So if you're watching this and want your own episode, hit me up! But enough about the future, we're still in the present, and it's all about the renegade with the red lips. She transferred to kick some more derby ass with Durham Region Roller Derby's Adam Smashers, and she's been shredding the skate park. I can't wait until her and I can finally skate together when we're less locked down. But until then, let's learn more about her on this episode of Wake and Skate. Uh, my name is Mia. I go by Red Lip Renegade in the skate community. You can call me Red or you can call me Renegade. Um, I'll respond to either. I like either as well. Uh, I'm 29 years old. I'm originally from Cornwall, Ontario, but moved to Kingston in 2017 to be with my current partner who is originally from Kingston. As Death mentioned, I am a recent transfer to Durham Region Roller Derby and I play for their charter team, the Adam Smashers. Um, some fun things about myself before I get into my long history of skate. Uh, I'm an executive administrative assistant to a provincial tourism agency. I've been working there since 2012 and hopefully we'll finish out my career there as, as well. Uh, in 2007, when I was 17, 18, I played bass in a punk band back home in Cornwall. We were called The Final Draw. We played covers of The Misfits and the Ramones as well as our own original material. Um, some other fun things. In 2014, I was an extra in a Fall Out Boy music video. That was filmed here in Kingston, and that was a great time. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been on set of anything, so that was an experience that I'll remember forever. This little guy back here, this is Mad Max, this is his derby name. Uh, I love cats, and I also love ducks. That's random. You know, I love ducks. So, my skate history and my love of skating, I would say, goes back to 2010? That's not right. No, I was 10, so 2000. <laughs> uh, when I was 10, I started rollerblading. Just originally, you know, around the block as far as you can go. But as I started to become a teenager, I would rollerblade after school on the bike paths in Cornwall, which are phenomenal. You can just take off 20 plus kilometers in a direction. You would always be on a path. Um, so long distance rollerblading was a big part of my life. Uh, it's something I did every day. When the snow melted, to when the snow fell, I was out rollerblading. So in 2015, my best friend and I went to a vintage show and I spotted an old pair of roller skates. I remember paying $50 for them and thinking that was really expensive. Roller derby is an expensive sport. So 50 bucks back then? Peanuts. <laughs> So I bought the pair of skates, put them on the shelf, and admire them from a distance. I posted the photo on Instagram, and a friend of mine suggested that I look into the local roller derby team. At the time, I was getting bored of rollerblading after 15 years of doing it. <laughs> so I looked into roller derby just a bit. I knew nothing else but that. You needed quad skates. So I emailed uh, Seaway Roller Derby Girls on the Sunday. 
I showed up to their practice on Tuesday and literally the rest is history. I skated with them about two years before I joined Kingston. It was a great time. We did have low numbers, but we worked on other things. Uh, the first year in 2015, we did have a, enough skaters for a team and I did play my first game that July. We played Belleville. I think my memory of my first game was everyone on my line had a penalty and it was just me on the on the track. And I looked over to my bench, who, I think they were talking to someone else. So I had no direction. <laughs> and I remember I had no idea what I was doing. I don't think I did well, but I, I tried. I tried. So in 2016, when our numbers started to diminish, we did focus a lot on footwork and endurance and skating. Uh, with what we could so I think that really shaped me into the skater I became when I transferred to KRD because we did so much footwork so at the end of 2016 I decided that I was going to move to Kingston and I started coming to some KRD practices so I played my first game with Kingston May 2017 I jammed that game and I remember thinking it was the hardest thing I'd have ever done in my life. It was harder than I thought. I was out of breath. I kept falling. I kept getting hit out of bounds. I kept doing the same thing. And I didn't understand why they they knew I kept doing I was gonna keep doing that. But after that, I a skater came up to me and kind of gave me a piece of advice that I still think of to this day. I said I thought it did horrible, and she's like, can I give you an, a tip? And I said, sure, lay it on me. And she said, I always knew where you were going because you would just stare at it. <laughs> oh my God, what? Oh, damn it. <laughs> I think that's the best piece of advice. They'll know, they'll know. So after that, I knew jamming was something I wanted to uh, keep pursuing and get better at. With KRD, I skated with Skateful Dead as well as their charter team, the Rogue Warriors. I got lots of charter and WIFTA and sanctioned game to experience with the Rogue Warriors and definitely fell in love with the increased level of play. First Rogue practice, I remember once again, it was so hard. And Alex looked at me dead in the eyes and he said, well, do you want to get better? And I was like, yes. And he was like, well, then you have to play hard. And I was like, okay. <laughs> but that's, he was absolutely right. If you want to get better, you kind of have to keep going past your comfort zone. And when things get easy, you need to increase the intensity. But that was a great experience. I loved playing with Kingston. In 2017, at the end of the season, I counted, I had played 17 plus games. It was a busy schedule. So 2018 rolls around. I play two games in 2018. I like to call 2018 the year of the injury. And it's four days before a game that I was really looking forward to. I remember looking at the clock. It was Thursday night at eight o'clock and I was practicing apex jumps and I landed and it just didn't feel right. I thought I had sprained my ankle. Looking back, I wish I just had. I went to the hospital and she told me that I had fractured the small bone on the side, the fibula, and I was devastated. I had never broken anything in my life. I didn't know how long it was gonna to take to heal. I knew nothing. Before I left the hospital, I did look the doctor dead in the eye and ask her if I'd be okay to play in two weeks. She thought I was crazy. It was out the majority of the season. I did everything I could off skates to prepare me to get back on skates. I rehabbed when I could, I ate well, I cut out coffee because that doesn't help bone healing. I coached, I still captained, I still um, took part in all the committees that I was still able to do. I played my first game back that September. So April, fast forward to September, I was able to play my first game back, which was a Durham game. It was their twice as dirty tournament, which the Skateful Dead took first place, so it was a great couple of games back. It was definitely a motivating factor to keep going. Fast forward to November, a couple months after that, I went to a training camp in Orangeville with ORG and we were practicing waltz jumps and I fell extremely hard on my butt. I didn't think anything of it until about an hour later when my vision started blurring and I knew right away that I had gotten a concussion. 
I was set back again. So a few months later, I was excited to get back into the season and start back up. So 2019 rolls around <laughs> and at the skate park that July, I was doing half cab slides. So when you approach the coping from behind and you do a 180 half cab and then throw your momentum to slide. I was landing them pretty consistently, but unfortunately I was going a little too aggressive and fell backwards. And uh, like any normal response, you put your arm back. It was instant and I knew I broke my wrist. Thankfully there was a very nice group of skateboarders. He asked me if I was okay and if he could do anything. I needed help to take off my skates. And then I called Alex. Alex came to pick me up. We went to the hospital and they put me in a plaster cast. They did say if I wasn't wearing my wrist guard that I probably would have snapped my forearm and, and been into a cast past my elbow. Thankfully that year I only missed one game. I was out of a cast by then, but I just didn't want to take a chance. You know, when you get broken so many times, you just don't risk it. <laughs> Fast forward to the end of October. A good friend of mine who I've met through Durham scrimmages, Gamma Bomb, asked me on the Sunday if I would be interested in trying out for a jammer literally the next day. I asked her more questions about the structure of uh, the team and their practice schedule and it was 100% within the realm of possibilities. So I made the decision to try out and I'm so thankful I did because I found out later in the week that I did make the team. <laughs> I am so excited to start increasing the level of play and I remember the first couple of practices once again. Thought to myself, what am I doing? This is so hard. And then Alex in the back of my mind was like, do you want to get better? Gotta play harder. I am excited to continue playing with them this season and going forward, get that level of experience. Everyone has been so welcoming. I'm thankful for everything that they do in our daily workouts during this hard time and our team meetings on Thursdays. It's It's been quite the adventure so far. I didn't really touch upon this, but I am primarily a jammer, like I mentioned. I do love um, doing hip flips. Um, getting past blockers on one foot and gaining uh, momentum and balance off other people's moves. Because I am more of a jukey cross lateral jammer, uh, joining the Adam Smashers has been a challenge in that sense. They have some of the strongest walls that it does require more pushing, so I am gaining more experience in that, which I'm very thankful for. It's making me a more well-rounded jammer. So that is my skate journey up till now. Yes. So when I started Derby in 2015, some of my skate goals to be as stable as I possibly could. I had the skating down I had no problems with laps and, and doing lateral things and skating backwards, but in terms of the derby stance and staying completely stable, um, I knew I needed to improve that stability. So that was always my main goal, was to be as stable as possible in a wall and to hold my own. Another goal of mine was to give six successful hits. Uh, that's always been a challenge for any new skater. The timing and the force behind it can be quite challenging. So that those were my goals. Are those still my goals today? Yes, but in a different sense. Transferring those goals from blocking to jamming. Like I mentioned, I am a more lateral jukey jammer. So I did want to, I did want to transfer that balance and stability to one-footed transitions and always finding the best way to get around blockers using that balance and stability, whether that be the hip flip or one-footed transitions, um, tiptoeing the lines, things like that require the core and the balance work. So I'm constantly working on those still. Um, as well as giving a successful hit. I always I still love giving successful hits. And as a jammer, when someone goes to pop you at a bounce and you pop them right back, 
um, and you successfully hit them, that's probably the greatest feeling. Or when it's a kind of jammer on jammer and you're coming up behind them and you want to hit them to slow them down and you land the timing perfectly, that's just the best. Uh, do I have any new goals? Yes. Uh, as well as progressing in a WIFTA ranking system um, and getting increased play with the Smashers, um, a goal of mine for the last few years has been to try out for Team Canada as well as Team Ontario. Uh, Team Canada was supposed to hold the tryout at the beginning of April. Unfortunately, that got cancelled. I hope to, that it does come back and we are able to try out again. Uh, I don't, do I think I'm going to make it the first time? No, but it'll definitely help me kind of to know where I stand uh, against other skaters that are extremely talented in the area. So I'm hoping that one day I can reach this goal and make Team Canada. Oh my god, I'm getting so close! Yeah, you almost have it. So oh. oh, you all good? Nice! So roller skating plays a huge role in my life. Apart from roller derby, I am currently the chapter manager for CIB Kingston, which is formerly known as Chicks and Bowls. For those who don't know, it was rebranded to CIB to, for inclusivity and welcome every skater um, to the skate park and kind of keep spreading the stoke. The chapter in Kingston was active a few years ago. I don't know the history behind it, but unfortunately it no longer existed. I did contact CIB and they put me in contact with the old chapter manager and we did successfully transfer the chapter um, into my name. So once the skate parks reopen, I am hoping to keep doing that. I started skate park skating in 2017 and have been doing it every day during the summer when I can, except for when you're broken. They don't recommend doing that. So once the skate parks reopen, I'm excited to continue to spread the stoke and get as many skaters in the skate parks as possible. I want to build that community and kind of bring positivity to people's lives through skateboard, as uh, skateboards, Mia, come on, uh, through <laughs> roller skating. So I'm excited to do that once the skate park's open. Uh, with roller derby, uh, I love the friends I've made, the increased play, meeting skaters from all across Ontario and the globe. It plays a huge role in my life because as when I was part of KRD, I did do a lot of committee work. I did social media, health and safety. I taught uh, new skaters, which I absolutely love doing. I love teaching new skaters, either at the skate park or roller derby. So I know I'm new to the Durham Region Roller Derby League. So once I start to get to know um, league skaters and the mechanics and all their committees, I hope to start joining and encouraging that way as well. Yes, it does play a huge role in my life. I think about it every day. <laughs> and it makes me sad during this time that I can't skate with all my friends and go outside and the nice weather starting and it kills me that I can't go to the skate park. I mean, I could street skate, um, which I, I, I do love doing, but it's just not the same. So yeah, that is my skate story, my skate history. Um, so this is Red Lip Renegade and Bad Max, who I don't believe has moved at all in the last 20 minutes, but that's okay. All right, have a great day, everyone. Mia, Max, signing off. Well, there you have it. Triple M, Mad, Max, and Mia. Man, from playing bass in her own band, to being in a Fall Out Boy music video, to playing with a handful of different derby teams in multiple different cities. Red Lip Renegade's done it all. That was awesome to learn more about her. And as I mentioned, I reached out and got a couple bites from some fellow skate friends about continuing Wake and Skate with further episodes, so this shan't be goodbye. Let's just call it a break, yeah? I won't keep myself to the edit one a week schedule anymore since this is no longer for school, 
Instead, this next episode should be a bit of a leisurely edit for me about a Motor City Madam skater who's been recently able to get back on eight wheels after recovering from her ACL injury. So we'll see her back at the skate park as soon as we can get back there ourselves. Till then, weirdlings.